Good morning, everyone. Time for another bright and shiny day celebrating Indonesia's independence. For the 75th anniversary of this great country, everyone's stuck at home. So I thought, even with these limitations, uh, what's the most patriotic thing I can do? At first, I thought about ranting why patriotism is a superfluous propaganda and it's a completely privileged concept. And why should I even care? I don't want to be a negative Nancy on this day of all days. Uh, so I read an article about what the most patriotic thing to do was. And uh, there are some smart options like going outside. And I saw learning about your country's history was one of them. Learning about the most prominent figures uh, that made their contributions and their valiant efforts to make the country the way it is. Which reminded me of this genuinely true story, I'm not making it up, the time our former president, Sukarno, got blackmailed by Russia and America with sex tapes. And Sukarno was enjoying all of it. Uh, so just a disclaimer, I'm just a YouTuber. Uh, so does it look like I'm knowledgeable in a, anything? I'm not a professional historian. I don't know everything. There's bound to be some inaccuracies. And you're, if you're generally interested in the story I'm going to say, then I suggest you do your own research. I'll be linking all the sources in the description. Uh, I'm just bringing light to the subject. All right, so let's get into this sexpionage, espionage, shall we say. Pada hari ini, di stadion utama ini, saya berbicara langsung kepada rakyat, rakyat seluruh Indonesia. So I don't need to explain who Sukarno is. Uh, he was Indonesia's first president after gaining independence from centuries of Dutch colonialism and is widely regarded as a national hero. But did you know he was a very, uh, how do I say it? A very promiscuous man. He, he had a very womanizing palace, and he wasn't afraid to hide it. So that was his reputation. He was known for his pervertedness and attracted the attention of the most powerful intelligence agencies in the world because of that. He openly supports polygamy and took on four official wives while maintaining a de facto marriage uh, with a fifth wife. He was literally a harem protagonist. He even went and said to a U.S. diplomat he was a very physical man and needed sex every day. Basically bragging to him. Well, you heard it here, folks. Having sex every day is the most patriotic thing to do. All right, let's get back to the story. So Indonesia had a pretty important role in the Cold War between Russia and America. Uh, it was quite populous, it was in a strategically vital position, it was home to the largest communist party besides Russia itself. Also, according to domino theory, if a revolution were to occur in Indonesia, all the countries surrounding it uh, might follow suit. Basically, just know that whoever got Indonesia had an upper hand in the war. So at first, America took the naive approach. They gave a bunch of weapons and resources to the rebel strongholds, and then a rebellion broke out. They continued supporting the rebellion by giving them more weapons and supplies, even conducting bomb raids and strafing government forces. But in the end, the rebellion didn't do much, so they went to the next best thing. Porn. They were pretty frustrated and desperate that the rebellion didn't work out, so the CIA were thinking that if they recorded a sex tape of the president and let the masses know, it'll spark another revolution. So they wasted a million dollars on this whole sexpionage project, and it ended about as well as he expected it to. First, they can't find a dark, bald man to stand in as Sukarno's porn actor, so instead, they made an intricate, realistic, full-face mask of him. A million dollars just for this. Uh, anyways, 1950 Indonesia. Uh, nobody had any television, so how were they even going to distribute it in the first place? It was literally just CIA's attempt at deep-faking a celebrity 
uh, onto porn, but this time the stakes were losing the Cold War. Uh, so yeah, it was a disaster and nothing came out of it. Russia's blackmail attempts were slightly more fruitful because they at least got the president to show up for the sex tape. Quote, when Sukarno visited Moscow in the 1960s, they sought to take advantage of his renowned sexual appetite, sending a batch of glamorous young women posing as air hostesses to his hotel. Unquote. Uh, so they sent a bunch of prostitutes uh, to his hotel and recorded, basically use it as blackmail. I don't know if this actually happened, but what actually did happen, uh, Sukarno was invited into a small private movie theater and they showed him some pornographic video of him being the main actor. The KGB expected him to be really frightened and he would agree to cooperate with him. But our glorious president, the oblivious, dense anime protagonist that he is, thought it was just a gift by the Soviet government. And then he asked more copies to bring it over to Indonesia to play in movie theaters. Sakana said the people of Indonesia would be proud to see him doing nasty things to Russian girls. And God. Damn, am I proud of him. I've gained a whole new level of respect for our former president and the history of how Indonesia valiantly fought for its independence as a whole. Uh, I do wish we could go back to simpler times playing porn in movie theaters because imagine if something insane like this happened today. So, uh, yeah. You better believe I'm patriotic as hell for this country.